Good morning and welcome to St. Francis of Assisi Episcopal Church here at Ottawa, Tennessee. We are blessed you are with us this rainy day in person and we're blessed you are joining us online. If you're joining us online and have not already done so, please download the full text booklet at sfaec.org. In it you will find all our hymns, all our scripture readings, as well as all our prayers. We give thanks today for Ann Acock, who has stepped in as guest organist, and we hold in prayer our regular organist, Dr. Pam Harris. She had a fall this morning, and we are holding her in prayers as she is being taken care of in urgent care. I invite you to stand and sing the opening hymn, When Morning Gilds the Skies. Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. revealed to chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured in raiment white and glistening. Mercifully grant that we, being delivered from the disquietude of this world, may by faith behold the King in his beauty, who with you, O Father, and you, O Holy Spirit, lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord.
The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 99, found on page 7. We will read it in unison. The Lord is king. Let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is high above all peoples. He is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One, Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Second reading is a reading from the second letter of Peter. I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to refresh your memory, since I know that my death will come soon, as indeed our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will make every effort so that after my departure, you may be able at any time to recall these things. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women, moved by the Holy Spirit, spoke from God. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. And suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said, while he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Blessed be God's holy name. Bless the one who creates us, redeems us, and sustains us. Amen. You might have come in expecting green hangings, and all of a sudden it's white. And rather than continuing in the Gospel of Matthew and in the letter of Paul to the Romans, here we are hearing from the Gospel of Luke and from Peter's second letter. You see, when August 6th falls on a Sunday, we move from ordinary to a that has shone so brightly on that mountain as Christ's glory shone forth from Luke's story begins with a reference to all Jesus had said, and in case you don't know what came before, and I don't expect any of you all would know this off the top of your head, Jesus had just told Peter that he would have to suffer and die. And then, Luke tells us, so Jesus went up the mountain to pray. In none of the other accounts is that detail given, that Jesus went up the mountain to pray. Luke is very focused on prayer. It is astonishing the number of times that prayer comes up in the Gospels. So if you were to take on a little discipline for the next week or so, I'd invite you to read the Gospel of Luke and notate how many times Jesus prays or prayer is mentioned in that Gospel. So this incident happens in the context of prayer. And what an incident it is. Suddenly, these sleepy disciples see their, their rabbi, their teacher, standing transfigured 
so that light shone from the very cells of his body and lit up even his garments to be dazzling white. And then Moses and Elisha appear and start talking to him. And they start talking about what Jesus just said prior to this gospel reading. His exodus at Jerusalem. That's the literal Greek word there used, exodus. His departure at Jerusalem. So all this is happening, and they're understandably overwhelmed. But they don't tell anybody. It makes it very clear at the end of the gospel. They went down from the mountain from this phenomenal experience and did not tell a soul. And for all we can tell, they didn't tell anybody until after Jesus' resurrection. Yet it wasn't without its impact. Because consider again how the opening part of our reading from the second letter to Peter goes. I think it right, as long as I am in this body, literally in the Greek, in this tent, to refresh your memory, since I know that my death will come soon, as indeed our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me, and I will make every effort so that after my departure, my leaving my tent, is the idiom in Greek, you may be able at any time to recall things. Imagine. You know that your time is short. Peter has been told, you don't have much longer. And he becomes focused on writing down the things he thinks others should know. And what's the very first thing he writes down? That experience on the mountaintop. That becomes prime to share with others. And I always wonder what, what others think they would write down if they knew their time was short. What would we commit to paper so that others could read? It's fascinating to think about. But this incident has had such a profound impact on Peter that he holds on to it. And he holds on to that exact word we heard in Luke's version, we heard my chosen. But Peter holds on to the exact, you are my beloved. And Brother Keith Nelson the Society of St. John the Evangelist takes on what, what does it mean to be beloved? And he says, Jesus does not, does not wait for us to get our act together. He does not wait for us to clean our noses and put on a clean shirt. He certainly does not wait for us to solve the mystery of human suffering articulate an airtight personal theology or establish an invariable routine of daily prayer. He does not wait for us to prove we deserve his love. And I think that is what Peter understood down to the core of his being. That even when he did not deserve all that Jesus shared with him, Jesus still chose him as one of the three to see the transfiguration. Jesus showed him, showed him in his resurrection that his denials of Jesus did not negate Jesus' love for him. It is 
what shapes and drives Peter to keep sharing the story and the other disciples so that we 2,000 years later continue to hear about this earth-changing moment of Jesus being transfigured so that he shone with the light that was in him, the light of light. Now, Peter did make some choices in what he cho chose to share. And I want to share with you a paragraph from a, a NOVA presentation. You know, NOVA is the scientific show that airs on um, Tuesday nights on PBS. And in this, called Perception Deception, there was this paragraph. There are more connections in your brain than there are stars in the Milky Way galaxy. So we literally walk around with 10,000 galaxies worth of neuronal connections in each one of our brains. What might be surprising to you is that as neurons process sensory signals, they create an edited version of reality, throwing away about 99% of the world. Neurons transform reality by competing one with the other. When a creature touches, smells, sees, or hears something, its sensory neurons fire, some a little, some a lot, depending on where the physical signal is strongest. But follow those signals down towards the brain and you'll see the weaker ones get stamped out. That's the end of the quotation and I will add the stronger ones remain. Now I enter this next part of the sermon not knowing that our organist would present with a fall this morning and that another member of our congregation fell on Friday. Last Sunday afternoon down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, I was laying face down on the pavement. My foot had caught and I went crashing down and the awareness I had was that my arm hurt, my glasses had broken into my temple, and that my watch was screaming, you've had a hard fall. Do we need to call 911? That's what I remember. Do you need help? And before I knew it, I was surrounded by six people, total strangers, who did not know me. And I moved from whatever was injuring me to being concerned about them. And before I knew it, one joked because he saw I was carrying a pharmacy bag. You don't have any sporin in there by chance, do you? <laughs> you see, because I have known and I have experienced the love of God through others, and I am so blessed that I have. In that moment, I saw those six people as messengers sent by God to help me when I needed help. And that was the decision that has now been hardwired into my brain. Because I see others as fellow 
servants of our Lord. And believe me, I could see the light shining brilliantly through each and every one of them as they tended to me and wouldn't leave me until they were sure I was steady on my feet and able to move forward. We each day have a myriad of experiences. Maybe in this moment, you're hearing my word. Something about your body is annoying you, or whatever it is. But we have, have as many neurons as there are stars and 10,000 galaxies. And what a miracle of life that is. And those neurons existed in our Lord Jesus as well. And like the stars they represent, they shined brilliant throughout his life. As one person put it, and I thought this was so fascinating, Virgavia and transform society that fundamentally diminishes human nature. And I saw those people as people who came to bring life. And how blessed I am. And as we do this today, I'm holding in prayer Pam and Maureen, who are also recovering from falls. In the midst of some of our darkest moments, we may see a light that surprises reframes all that is happening. Some days that's easier than others, depending on what else is going on in our, in our lives. But the one who came as Peter writes in that concluding paragraph that we would do well to be attentive to this lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawn and the morning star rises in our hearts. The light of the world came at once and burn and illuminate so much around us. May we have eyes. Please stand. Let us affirm our words. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and mind to our God, saying, Holy that the love which passes ceaselessly between Father and the Son in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may renew and deepen the love that our self-disclosure in Christ and your enduring presence among us as Spirit may help us to understand both you and ourselves made in your image and likeness. We pray. For our families, our households, and our communities, that they may be places of communion and mutual support, which build us up and strengthen us in grace and truth, we pray. Thankful for our world, which you made through Christ, and renewed in the power of his resurrection, that we may be wise and careful stewards of creation, we pray. In the power of the Spirit who joins our prayer to Christ, enduring intercession, we pray for the sick, the suffering, and all who stand in need, including Ann Acock, the Brand family, Sister Brewer, Karen Burns, Pat Cahill, the Copeland family, Don Curtis, Reverend Taylor Dinsmore and family, John Duban, Greg Emmett, Betty Farrar, Tracy Gills, Bruce Groberg, the Groberg family, Gail Haggard and family, Joshua Perry Hale, Virginia Henry, Diane Honeycutt, Mary Lou Horning, Jeffrey Glenn Johnson, Pam Johnson, Joan Kelly, Candace Lee, Riley Lock, Michelle Purchase, Buckley Robbins, Nick Rowe Roberts, Mary and Bill Sanford, Jean Chu, Mary Scott, Joe and Sharon Slowinski, Paul Slope, Clayton Sniff, Sarah Tullock, Sarah Sheila and Ron Wall, Betsy Walker, Olivia Weatherford, Josh Weaver, the Williams family, the Wolf family, Barbara, Bob, Ken, Lindsay, LL, Mary, Steve, Tina, Jamie, baby, me. on our prayer we pray for Hamilton County Schools we pray for those who have recently died and all who have entered your heavenly kingdom Let us pray. Gracious God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father, accept our prayers this day. By the inner workings of your Spirit, deepen our communion with you, the source and goal of our life. Make us more and more signs of your enduring love. This we pray through Christ who lives and works with you in the Holy Spirit. One God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God.
God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Mighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of our Lord Jesus Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. When that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my, my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased.
We continue on page 16. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift the hearts of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is wise to give our thanks to Christ. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before. Before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Fulfillment, the sanctification of all. 
And the hour had come for him to be glorified by you as heavenly father, having loved his own who were in the world. He loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, waiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We, we praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with Francis of Assisi and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. Through we praise you in union with them and give you Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Christ's communion prayer is found at the top of page 21. Let us pray it in unison. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Y'all may be seated for the announcement. And I, this is a Semper Gundy Sunday. I'm just saying. And I'm so glad you all are a flexible congregation. Uh, it makes a huge difference. Uh, again, we give thanks to Ann Acock for literally stepping in at the last minute. God bless you. We are so grateful. And um, we continue to hold Pam in prayer. The latest update I got from Elaine Cantalo, who took her, ended up going to Park Ridge ER. And so they're doing a CT scan and going to get her nose closed up. And uh, her husband is on the way. So um, thanks to those who just jumped into action and make sure she got the attention she needed. And please hold her in your prayers. For those who are staying afterwards, and I hope you all are, there are uh, refreshments down in the parish hall, thanks to the Hartmans. And so when I stuck my head down there, that looked really good. And I hope you all will take time to go down there and enjoy them. Uh, we continue to stay active. I have to give thanks, and she's not here to thank her personally, but thanks to Gay Moore who stepped in this week, and to any and all who helped make possible the annual drive through prayer lunch we do for the educators in this end of Hamilton County Schools. So we sent out invitations to nine schools, and we served almost 500 educators on Thursday. Thanks to the tents of St. Francis, uh, we didn't get as wet as we could have on that rainy day, and we give thanks for that. And um, please know that this is a ministry that means a lot. And because school is starting back, God willing and weather cooperating, I will be down on Wednesday street side uh, during the school zone hours, both um, the morning and the afternoon school zone hours. I don't dare do it unless they slow down, I'm just saying. Uh, but I do stand down there. If you know people who want personal prayers as school's starting back, please encourage them to come see me. I'll be down there willing to pray with anybody personally, but I will be praying for everybody as they return to school at, in those two time frames on Wednesday. Tuesday and Thursday, we have music lessons in the parish hall Wednesday night at 6. I will be in the parish hall doing evening prayer online, but you're welcome to come join me in person or watch it later if that time doesn't work. I hope um, that many of you all are able to take advantage of the fact that we are able to keep our worship online throughout the year. And so it's, you know, it's always there. If you're not able to attend a service, you can catch up by going to participate in worship online, and I hope you all take advantage of that. Um, it is birthday and anniversary Sunday, and um, I know we had one birthday at 8 o'clock. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries at this service for the month of August? Let me get specific. Any August birthdays or anniversaries? I'll stand in for Monday's closing. You're standing in for who? Monday's closing. Okay. Yeah, standing in for people. You may always stand in. You don't have to ask permission. <laughs> the communion of saints is about all of us being in prayer together, right? All right. For, all right. Chloe, Gordon, and who are your two? My son, his wife. Her. Thank you. 
I just blanked. Kirk and Suzanne. All right. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on these, your servants, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And happy birthday to all those family members. We appreciate you all standing in. Uh, and then it is time for the closing blessing. And I don't know if I'm going to get any help with it because, as you can tell, I need help today. Thank you. It's good to have your help, and I like your clogs. All right. Let me get this where you can see it. Can you see that okay? The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. The Lord God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you safely to that heavenly country where God lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.